Hey guys, YouTuber100 here. Now here with number three on my list of the 10 best Summer Slams, which is Summer Slam 2001. Yeah, so I just finished watching the show about like 20, 25 minutes ago, minutes ago, and this was an awesome show. Yeah, this show was just awesome right here. Yeah, this was just a yeah, that's pretty much all I can sum it up. This was an awesome show. So let me just get right into it. Show kicked off with the Intercontinental Championship match. Lance Storm defending against Edge. I thought this was pretty good right here, yeah. And a lot of good technical wrestling from both guys. Yeah. One point Lance Storm was Irish whipping Edge and that as Edge was coming back, he like just got a roll up on the Lance Storm. And, yeah, a lot of good technical wrestling here, as I said, with, like, a lot of it was from Landstorm with, like, the abdominal stretch and, like, the half Boston Crab and everything, yeah. Yeah, and then, at one point, Landstorm, like, reversed an Irish whip or something, and then he just, like, slid under Edge's legs and got a half Boston Crab in on Edge. And Edge was, <clears throat> then got to the rope eventually, and he's, like, pulled himself when Landstorm like let go of Half Boston Crab Edge just it just like got in the Half Boston Crab on Landstorm. And then Christian came to ring being out and then he was wanting to spear Landstorm, but he inadvertently quote unquote inadvertently speared Edge. Yeah, this was kind of around the time where Christian was turning on Edge. So yeah, it probably wasn't really an accident, but yeah, we were made to think it was an accident. Yeah, and then, yeah, Edge tried an execution, and Landstorm countered, and then Edge countered back into the ed execution, and Edge won the match, and the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, that was a really good match right there, three and a quarter. And then next up with a six-man tag team match. Test and the Dudley Boys versus the APA and Spike Dudley. Yeah, uh, this was just fine for what it was. Yeah, it really wasn't that long. I don't think it was even ten minutes, but yeah, I thought this was okay for what it was. Yeah, yeah, it was just kind of back and forth between both teams. Yeah, and the Dudley Boys set up a table at ringside. Test was gonna throw Spike Dudley out of the ring onto it, but Spike Dudley was able to counter it before Tess could throw him on. Yeah, and then both, all six guys were brawling, and at the end of the match, Spike Dudley tried to do a Dudley dog on to Tess, but Tess was able to throw Spike off. Spike flew out of the ring right through the table. Yeah. While the referee was on the outside checking on Spike, Ratchel got a clothesline from Hill on Tess. And should have been over there, but referee was still on the outside with Spike. And then Shane McMahon popped up and nailed Bradshaw with a steel chair. And then Tess was able to pin Bradshaw and Tess and the Dudley Boys won. So yeah, that was just fun. I give it about uh, two and a half stars. And then next was a title for title match. Yeah, sorry. To Jerry versus Spike Dudley. Oh, just Spike Dudley, sorry. To Jerry versus X Pac. Yeah, sorry. I don't know why I said Spike Dudley, yeah. And Jerry was the WWF Light Heavyweight Champion, and X Pac was the WCW Cruiserweight Champion. Yeah, I thought this was okay for what it was, yeah. I think this is kind of like Takamichi Noku versus Aguila from WrestleMania 14, yeah. This was kind of short, but it was still good for the time it lasted. Yeah, a lot of good cruiserweight wrestling. Yeah. And it was a lot of high flying moves. Yeah. yeah. And X Pac at one point did that surfboard like maneuver on to Jerry. And yeah, X Pac's shoulders were on the canvas and the referee was trying to was counting. Yeah, and that forced X Pac to let go. Yeah. Yeah, and Jerry well, got the tarantula on the X Pac, and obviously, yeah, he can't couldn't hold it for longer than four seconds, or he'd be disqualified. Yeah, 
And at one point, well, Tajiri and X-Pac were on top of a turnbuckle. X-Pac was, like, punching Tajiri, and Tajiri just, like, flipped back, and then just pulled X-Pac off and got him in a pinning predicament. And, yeah, but X-Pac was able to get his shoulder up. <laughs> and Tajiri tried a German suplex, and X-Pac kicked out of that. And then X-Pac got a, an X-Factor onto Tajiri, but, yeah, X-Pac couldn't get a cover. And then Albert came out to ringside. He was just standing there. Standing, like, right at the end of the entranceway. When Tajiri got, like, some kind of kick on X-Pac, Albert then got on the ring apron, and Tajiri spit red mist into Albert's eyes. And the referee had his, kind of, his, kind of was paying attention with Albert. And then that allowed X-Pac to get a low blow on Tajiri, and then an X-Factor and X-Pac won. Yeah. So yeah, it was alright for what it was, just kind of short. Or, yeah, I give that about two and three quarter. And then next up was Chris Jericho versus Rhino. Yeah, this was a really good match right here. This was really entertaining. Yeah, early on, X Rhino was on the outside of the ring. And Chris Jericho was going to dive on the outside onto Rhino, but Stephanie, who was in Rhino's corner, like grabbed onto Jericho's leg, and that was distracted Jericho, and then Jericho then dove out of the ring, and Rhino gave Jericho a gore. Yeah. And yeah, Rhino was scoring, uh, schooling Chris Jericho. Yeah, I can't talk today. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. yeah, he was pretty much getting a lot of the upper hand on Chris Jericho. He was giving like a body scissors and an airplane spin and other stuff to Jericho. Mm -hmm. Then Chris Jericho then got an upper hand on Rhino. And then Stephanie got on the ring apron, kind of distracted the referee. And then Chris Jericho kissed Stephanie. And then Jericho had got a lion salt on to Rhino. But Rhino kicked out of it. And Stephanie was just like gagging on the outside of the ring. After being kissed by Jericho. And then Rhino got the walls of Jericho in on Chris Jericho. Oh, but Chris Jericho got the ropes or something, yeah. And then Rhino tried to do the gore, but Chris Jericho moved out of the way. Rhino hit the turnbuckle. And Chris Jericho rolled Rhino up, but then he turned it into the walls of Jericho. And Chris Jericho actually gave Ry more pressure onto Rhino. He, like, put his r leg back more to apply more pressure. And then Rhino tapped out, and Chris Jericho won. But yeah, that was a good match right there. I'd give it three and a half stars. And then next up was the ladder match for the Hardcore Championship, Jeff Hardy defending against Rob Van Dam. This was a really, really good match right here. This was the second best match of the night right here. Now this was really good right here. This was like an ECW style match. This was real violent. You know, like... At one point, Jeff Hardy had the ladder like halfway into the ring, and then RVD just like shoved it into Jeff Hardy's face. Or something, yeah. Like RVD hit the ladder and then it went up into Jeff Hardy's face. And then Jeff Hardy then returned the favor and did the same thing to RVD. He, so RVD was trying to bring the ladder in. Jeff Hardy like flipped over RVD and hit the ladder and it went up into RVD's face. And then the ladder was set up in a corner of the ring ring and Jeff Hardy was on top of it and then RVD did a rolling thunder all the way across the ring onto Jeff Hardy. Yeah and then at another point the ladder was on top of Jeff Hardy and RVD did another rolling thunder. And at one point RVD gave like a m huge superplex to Jeff Hardy from on top of the ladder down to the canvas and Jeff Hardy just looked dead. And then Jeff Hardy got like a sunset power bombing on RVD off of the ladder to the canvas. Yeah. And then at one point Jeff Hardy then got a grip on the belt, but RVD like moved the ladder and Jeff Hardy was hanging from the thing that was holding the hardcore championship, kind of like what happened at WrestleMania 17. Yeah, and then RVD he tried to do tried to knock Jeff Hardy off by doing like his 
thing where he comes from the turnbuckle and jumps back at, to kick someone. Yeah, RB tried that, but he missed, and then Jeff Hardy just like let go. I think Jeff Hardy just let go right there because RB was supposed to hit him there. Yeah. Then Jeff Hardy tried to climb again, then RBD just tipped the ladder over, and Jeff, like, though he hit his arm on the ladder, then he just nailed, went back on the canvas head first. And then that allowed RBD to climb the ladder and retrieve the Hardcore Championship. And RBD wins. So yeah, very good match right there. Three and three quarter. And then next up was the Steel Cage match for both Tag Team Championships. It was The Undertaker and Kane, who were WCW Tag Team Champions, versus DDP and Canyon, the WWF Tag Team Champions. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't really have any complaints about this. This was pretty much what I expected, yeah. Undertaker and Kane pretty much dominating the entire match. Yeah. Early on, DDP and Canyon tried to escape, just like right when the match began, they tried to climb over. And Undertaker and Kane, Undertaker and Kane just got him back in. Now, what I don't understand was why they didn't just let one guy escape and then just the other one would be fair game for them. Yeah, I don't really understand why they didn't just do that right away. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, Undertaker and Kane pretty much dominated the match, like I said. DDP was trying to get in some offense. Canyon just, he could not do anything. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, at one point, point, Canyon tried to do a diving attack something on Kane, and Kane just caught him in midair and gave him a huge choke slam. And then Kane, like, just drove Canyon, like, head and back first into a corner of the cage. And DDP was sandwiched between the ring ropes and the cage. And the Undertaker charged at him, like, three or four times. And as he was coming around to do coming around to do it one more time, Kenya then jumped from the corner of the cage and nailed Undertaker. And he tried to escape again, and Kane was trying to get him back, and then Kane was able to like do something on Kane where he had his leg over him and just swung him back or something. And then DDP got a DDT on the Undertaker. Yeah, and JR and Paul Hamer were getting all tongue tied. He said it was a DDP, and then Paul Heyman said a DDT by DDP, <laughs> which was kind of funny, yeah. And then Undertaker and Kane were both down, DDP and Canyon tried to escape again, then Undertaker and Kane sat up at the same time. They were going after DDP and Canyon again, they were on top of the cage, then the Undertaker was standing on top of the cage, and he got DDP back into the ring. And then he just told Kane to let Canyon go, and so Canyon escaped the cage, and then now, they did it, and yeah, DDP was fair game for Undertaker and Kane. <laughs> and pretty much, yeah, Kane was just like sitting in the corner of the ring just watching the Undertaker just demolish DDP. And then Undertaker was playing a mind game with DDP, he told him that he would let him live, and he was gonna let DDP escape the cage. And as DDP was climbing out, Undertaker grabbed him by the throat and choke slammed him back into the ring, and then Undertaker gave DDP the last ride and pinned him, and the Undertaker and Kane won the WWF Tag Team Championship, so yeah, it was just fine, I don't really have any complaints here, so I give this two stars. And then next up we got the WWF Championship match, Stone Cold, Steve Austin defending against Kurt Angle, this was a great match right here, match of the night right here, this was awesome. Now they started attacking each other in the aisle way before the match began. They were just going at it. And then they got back in the ring. Yeah, and this was a really good match. A lot of good wrestling here. German suplexes and regular suplexes. Kurt Angle delivered like six German suplexes to Stone Cold at one point. Yeah. And then Stone Cold gave Kurt Angle the stunner. And Kurt Angle kicked out of it. And then Stone Cold gave then go another stunner after that, but Kurt Angle rolled out of the ring, and Stone Cold just like threw Kurt Angle's, Kurt Angle's face into the ring post several times, and it busted Kurt Angle open. And yeah, and then, yeah, 
And at one point, Stone Cold Suplex Kurt Angle over the barricade on, into the crowd on the concrete floor. And then, well, Kurt Angle, then Kurt Angle got a ankle lock on Stone Cold. Lock, Stone Cold was on the barricade or something. And then he just like pulled Stone Cold right back into the ring, didn't let go of his ankle at all, and just gave him the ankle, the ankle lock on the inside of the ring. Yeah, and yeah, Kurt Angle survived three Stone Cold stars in the match. When he survived the third one, Stone Cold just was completely irate. Yeah, and then, yeah, end of this match, Stone Cold he just realized he couldn't beat Kurt Angle, and then he nailed Earl Hebner and knocked him out. And then Kurt Angle got an angle slam, I think, or something on Stone Cold, and then Mike Kyoto came down to officiate, and Stone Cold survived. And then he gave Kurt Angle a low blow, but Mike Kyoto didn't call for the bell. And Stone Cold gave Mike Kyoto the Stone Cold Stunner, and then Stone Cold went for the WWF title, where Tim White came down, and Stone Cold nailed him with the WWF title. Then Kurt Angle got an angle slam on Stone Cold. And then Nick Patrick, who was a WCW referee, came to the ring. Started to do the count, but then he just stopped and called for the bell and disqualified Stone Cold. And Kurt Angle won by disqualification. And then afterwards, Kurt Angle was pissed and he just mauled Nick Patrick, just knocked him out and then gave him the ankle lock. And Nick Patrick was tapping so fast, he was like... Yeah, Nick Patrick just tapping so fast yeah so yeah it was still a disqualification but it was still a really good match I give it a four and a quarter and then we got the main event for the WCW championship Booker T defending against The Rock I thought this was pretty good I think this might be Booker T's best WCW championship match yeah in WCW he didn't really have very many good WCW title matches because yeah during the time when he was WCW champion, the title was pretty much just, it meant nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and early in the match, The Rock, obviously of course, because Shane was in Booker T's corner, The Rock went chasing after Shane. Yeah. And Rock and Booker T were fighting in the crowd. And then, yeah, for some reason, yeah, Shane, like, loosened the top turnbuckle padding, but he didn't take it off. Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, why would he untie it but not take it off, yeah? And then I think it just, like, fell off when one of them bounced off the ropes for an Irish whip or something. Yeah. One point, Rock got a sharpshooter on Booker T, but Shane was up on the apron distracting the referee, and the Rock just, like, pulled Shane into the ring. And, and then it allowed Booker T to get the Rock, and then Booker T went for the cover, Rock kicked out. Then at one point, Shane put a steel chair in a corner of the ring. And as Booker T was kind of crawling towards it, the referee was getting it out, and Shane nailed The Rock with the WCW title. And then the APA came out, and they, Brad, Farouk was chasing Shane around the ring, and then Bradshaw gave Sh Shane a clothesline from hell, kind of getting back at him for costing them the six-man tag earlier. And then Booker T was catapulted into the exposed turnbuckle and yeah and then the rock tried to got the people's elbow in on Booker T. He had the match won but Shane interrupted the count by like tugging on the referee's leg or something. And then the rock gave Shane a rock bottom on the outside of the ring on the floor. And Booker T gave Rock like a spine buster kind of scissors kick. As Booker T was taunting with the spinner Rooney, Rock jumped up and gave Booker T a rock bottom and won until The Rock won the WCW title. So yeah, good match. Three and a half stars. Overall show, I give it an 8.75 out of 10. Really good stuff with Stone Cold and Kurt Angle, RBD, Jeff Hardy, and even Rock versus Booker T, and a lot, of the, a lot of the other stuff on the show. Pretty much everything was good. Yeah, so, yeah. This was just a really awesome show right here. So yeah, that's number three on my list for SummerSlam, and the top ten. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.